In this video, I'm going to share with you my top 15 3D printing apps and integrations for creating the ideal 3D printing workflow. So whether you're a complete beginner or an advanced 3D printing hobbyist, you're sure to find something to level up your 3D printing game. Let's get after it. So as of right now, it's been about three weeks since my family and I left Israel due to the rocket and terror attacks from Hamas in Israel. And so, yes, I'm making this video largely because I can't actually show you any 3D printers or prints right now. But don't worry, I actually promise that it's going to be an informative one anyways. That's because unless you're exclusively running closed ecosystem printers like Bamboo Lab or Anchor Make, there are a myriad of different ways and apps and integrations and plugins that you can use to improve your 3D printing experience and workflow. Oh, and even if you are running one of those printers, stick around to the end because you're going to be very surprised at how many of these apps and integrations still apply to you. By the way, I've broken this list down into larger categories by function below. So if you're already a pro at say designing and you have your own software of choice already, feel free to skip around. And if you wanna go deeper into any one of these subjects, I've actually done entire in-depth videos about nearly every one of these apps, which I will link to as we go along using a card like this. Finally, I just wanna say that this is just my own list of my own favorites. So if I'm missing one or if you disagree, then please do let me know by dropping a comment below. And who knows, maybe I'll do an entire video about that one as well and give you a shout out for the recommendation. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so I know that a website isn't really an app or an integration, though these two actually do have their own apps and integrations with your desktop computer, but I wanted to create a comprehensive step-by-step -step list of my workflow from soup to nuts. And nine times out of 10, that starts with finding the right ready-made model to 3D print. Generally, my first go-to when I'm looking for a model is printables.com by Prusa. I know that there are other model sites out there with more models like Thingiverse or model sites with one-click printing like Maker World by Bamboo Lab and so on. But because printables.com is the easiest for me to navigate, has the least junk on it and has a really enticing reward system that allows you to get free filament, full video about that process and how to optimize for getting the most free filament here, I generally prefer to source my models from printables.com if I can. If I can't immediately find the model I'm looking for on printables, I switch over to Thangs, which has a cross-repository search function and which actually scans the geometry of models on different sites so that you can, for example, filter out models that aren't actually printable. This functionality also means that you can search for similar models based on their actual geometry. At this point, I should also mention, as I said before, that Thangs.com also has apps for iOS and Android, a Blender plugin, and a desktop sync app that offers some incredibly power functionality, including the ability to automatically sync your models to the cloud, including revision history, as well as collaboration features for sharing models. If you're a proficient designer and you wanna have GitHub style control over changes to your models, you definitely need to check out Thangs Sync. Thangs is great for searching the entire wide web for ready-made models, but oftentimes you just need to design something from scratch to suit your own needs and realize your own vision. When that happens, there are two pieces of software that I regularly use. The first is Onshape, which is a cloud-based CAD software, stay with me here, that's incredibly powerful and easy to use. Yeah, 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 I know what the haters are going to say in the comments. Onshape's free hobbyist version makes all of your models public. And if you want them to not be public, it'll cost you $1,500 a year. But personally, I'm a hobbyist and I make all of my models available for free to you guys online anyways. So I really don't care. I personally find it much easier to learn and to use than Fusion 360. It runs much better on my Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. And I love that I can tweak my models on the go via the iOS app or share them with members of my Discord like a Google Doc so they can actually modify them and collaborate with me on the models in real time. At this point, I use Onshape for virtually all of my functional modeling. And I did an entire video about why, as well as what it's not good for, which you can check out right here. With that said, you'll note that I qualified my statement a lot. I use Onshape for all of my functional modeling. 
but for other things such as organic modeling or just modifying existing STLs quickly and easily, most people would agree that Blender is going to be a much better choice. I hate the fact that I need to recommend to you to learn the basics of two different tools. And yes, you can theoretically use either one of them to accomplish anything that you want with enough practice and enough upgrades and plugins. But the simple fact is that each of these tools is designed with a different use case in mind, and you really wanna be at least proficient in both. You wouldn't use a jigsaw for straight cuts, but you also can't get by in a workshop with only a table saw. Same deal here. So yeah, check out that video that I mentioned before, and it'll be linked in the description as well if you missed the card. So you've got your model, and now you are ready to slice it up for 3D printing. Great. Today, more than ever before, you have a ton of choices when it comes to slicers. The usual suspects like Prusa Slicer, Cura, and Simplify 3D, plus a whole slew of offshoots and modifications from different companies and parties like Bamboo Studio, Super Slicer, Chidi Slicer, Creality Print, Anycubic Slicer, Anchor Make, and honestly, many more. For a while there, I was using different slicers for each of my different printers. I had Prusa Slicer for my Prusa, Bamboo Studio for my Bamboo printers, and so on. That is, until I discovered Orca Slicer. Orca Slicer combines all the great improvements that Bamboo Lab made to Bamboo Studio, which itself is actually based on Prusa Slicer, but it actually added much, much more functionality, such as the ability to add any printer that you want. It also allows you to manage your printer from within a tab in the slicer and has additional customization and tuning options that just don't exist in Bamboo Studio, and more. In fact, I actually made an entire video about why I switched to Orca Slicer, which you can find right here if you wanna go deeper, because since I made that video, it's only gotten better and better. Yes, there are still some small esoteric features that force me to keep Prusa Slicer, which was my old favorite on my computer, such as the really handy ruler function, hint, hint, soft fever. But otherwise, I'm using Orca Slicer for 100% of my FDM printing needs, even when I test a printer that comes with its own proprietary slicer, like the Creality K1 or the Chidi X Max 3. Hey guys, uh, really quickly, I have to take a break. I'm sorry for the background. I'm at my son's temporary daycare that they set up for all the Israeli kids that have been displaced by the war. And uh, we're paying for that and paying for Airbnbs and it's all getting really, really expensive, which is why I am super grateful, even more so than ever, to Sunlu, which is the sponsor of today's video. They were so kind in understanding that this was gonna be kind of a makeshift video with not as much B-roll. I'm not even able to accept the exciting new product that they're talking about, but they were still really cool in supporting me. So I hope you'll support them. Sunlu makes a whole range of awesome, high quality filaments that are wildly, wildly affordable. Like from 9.99 a kilo if you buy in bulk, they make PLA, ABS, PETG, and they just released an all new filament which is string-free PLA. So if you're trying to print some of those cool new models like Voronoi vases and other things that you really need stringing to be absolutely zero on, this is gonna be an awesome option for you or just any print with a lot of detail that you don't want stringing. I haven't had a chance to try it out, but I trust the folks at Sunlu because I've tried their products. They're fantastic. And I use their PLA and their PETG and ABS in my own print farm all the time. Once again, let me thank Sunlu for helping me pay for this uh, not vacation of a vacation and make this video possible while I'm out here in exile in Greece. I really appreciate them. I hope you guys will check out the link in the description. It helps support the channel, helps me keep creating videos even though I don't have access to my 3D printers. All right, well, let's get back into it. In addition to model repositories and slicers, you also have more choices than ever when it comes to firmware and printer interfaces. In the past, I'd done a whole video about all of my favorite plugins for Octoprint, which at the time was the long reigning champion for people who want to connect their printers to their network and add smart functionality. These days though, I really prefer to run Clipper on every single one of my printers that support it because it's easy to learn, it loads faster, it has a lot less clutter and noise, in my opinion, and it has a huge community of people that you can turn to for answers. Oh, and it also really, really excels at things like input shaping, custom macros, and connectivity. After all, there's a reason that most 3D printers today are shipping with some form of Clipper out of the box. Now there are multiple choices of web interfaces for your Clipper printers, but I run mainsail on most of mine just because I wanna standardize all my printers to the same look and feel. 
Now, I'm not going to go too deep into Clipper in this video or how to convert your printer to Clipper. There are dozens of other great videos and tutorials out there on how to do all that for most of the common compatible printers out there. I will, however, point your attention to a recent video I made where I share the 10 must-have Clipper upgrades that I make to every new Clipper printer I own in case you want to go further down that rabbit hole of customizing and upgrading this specific item on this list. One of the single most important upgrades that I made to each of my printers along the way was the ability to view and control it remotely. This not only allows me to leave the printer running without fear of failures or overheating, but it also empowers me to start prints remotely should I get the urge. Yes, you technically can set up your own proxy connection like Tailscale and do this for free, but personally, I'm not so savvy with the whole network security thing, and like most people, I just can't be bothered. That's why when it comes to enabling remote access on your printer, there are two major players in the game. Octo Everywhere and Obico. Both of them allow you to create a secure tunnel into your Clipper or OctoPrint enabled printer so you can view the camera feed, control the printer, start and stop prints, and more. What's more, each of them offer an AI spaghetti detection feature which affords you an extra layer of protection and peace of mind in case you want to leave your printer running overnight or even over a long weekend. Each of these has different pros and cons such as being more affordable for more printers or having their own dedicated and sophisticated mobile apps complete with things like home screen widgets. I actually did an entire video about remotely accessing your 3D printer, including some of the tips and tricks for these different services, which you can check out right here. I also had the founders of both Octo Everywhere and Octo Print on the Infill podcast, so here's a link to a playlist of all the episodes where you can check both of these out if you want. Okay, so we're printing. Our printer is connected to the web and we're ready to go out into the real world and do whatever it is that people do when they leave their houses. I wouldn't know. Which app is best for monitoring your print obsessively under the table at the bar? Because there are a lot, but personally here are some that I like. The first one on my list is Octopod and it's one that I've talked about before actually. The reasons for this are manifold. First, it allows me to connect printers from any service, such as my own Tailscale installation, Octo Everywhere, Obico, or whatever. Second, at least for iPhone users, it is the best app I've discovered in terms of taking full advantage of the various tools that Apple makes available to developers. It syncs with your Apple Watch to allow you to preview or stop your prints right on here. It allows you to add interactive live widgets on your printers to the home screen of your phone. It even has an Apple TV app. They even added the relatively new functionality for live activities, so you can actually see little chips throughout your iPhone experience with the information of your print. So it's really, really cool. I guess the only critique that I have of this one, honestly, is just that the interface itself is really not all that pretty, no matter which theme you choose. By the way, for the Android users in the audience, I will also mention OctoApp by my friend Christian Worthner, who I also had on the Infill podcast. You can check out that episode here. His app has a lot of features that I mentioned before, from widgets and Octo Everywhere integration and Wear OS compatibility. If you're an Android user, get an iPhone. But until then, use OctoApp. By the way, I mentioned that the interface for Octopod isn't the most gorgeous, so I do want to point out that Obico, who offer that remote access service that I mentioned before, also have an amazing mobile app, and their user interface is gorgeous in my opinion. The only thing is it will only work with the printers that you link through Obico's service, and so you can only link one printer for free last time I checked. There is also a newer app on the marketplace called Joint, which is specifically targeted at Voron users and touts a more pleasant mobile experience than any of the other apps. Unfortunately, I'm actually unable to fully play around with it too much because I'm away from my printers and they're all unplugged, but their demo did look really promising and I particularly like how they integrated the dynamic island functionality. So check that out if you want. If you've made it this far, you must be a diehard geek like me, and hey, I appreciate you. So let me reward your loyalty with a really advanced integration, though Zach Friedman unfortunately beat me to it in a recent video. Damn you, cyborg! 
That advanced integration is called Home Assistant. Well, it's not actually an integration, it's actually a smart home platform of its own that you run off of Raspberry Pi, and it, it has plugins to manage and automate everything from your smart lights to your AC unit to your Tesla and everything in between. But what's unique about Home Assistant is that it actually makes your home smart. See, controlling your lights from your phone or Alexa isn't actually smart, it's just web enabled. But with Home Assistant, you can actually make your home smart, meaning that it can monitor your behavior and actually predict what you want to do without needing additional input. I, for example, have automations that close the blinds in my living room when I turn on the TV, but only if it senses that the sun is still above the horizon. Pretty slick, huh? But what does all this have to do with 3D printing? Well, fortunately for us, there are actually Home Assistant plugins for Bamboo Lab printers, Clipper Moonraker, and Octoprint. And these plugins, which unfortunately I can't show you because again, I don't have access to my printers and really haven't had time to properly set them up. They both read information from your printers and allow you to push commands and information to your printer. So not only could you create a custom dashboard with all of your printers and times remaining, temperatures and all of that, but you could also create sophisticated automations based on that information. So you could, for example, set Alexa to automatically announce when each printer is done, including useful information. Jonathan, your Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon just completed printing useless object 07541. The total print time was 37 minutes and 42 seconds. You could program different light strips in your enclosure to change color progressively as your print progresses or flash when there's an error with your printer. You could program your printers to turn on automatically in the morning when you walk into the room and turn off automatically if a print finishes, but only if it's after 10 p.m. I've even used Home Assistant's Stream Deck integration to control my 3D printers from my Elgato Stream Deck, loading up that profile whenever Orca Slicer is the frontmost app on my computer. The possibilities are endless, and like I said, I just haven't been able to really justify going down the rabbit hole because it's a huge time-consuming project. But honestly, I would really love to devote some time to doing this when I get home, and I would love to come up with dashboards, automations, and ideas and recommendations for all of you. So please let me know in the comments below if that's a video that you'd be interested in, because I can really only justify spending that amount of time and committing to something like that if it provides value to you guys and you're actually going to watch it. So there you have it, my top 15 apps, integrations, and utilities for leveling up your 3D printing workflow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as it's the first of, I'm not sure how many, that I will record during my self-imposed exile for the war. I do want to take a moment on that note to once again thank you guys for the outpouring of concern and support for myself and my family. It really warms our hearts and it keeps us going during these really difficult times. So I love you guys, for real. That's all for this week, but I'll see all of you on the next layer.